So here's the piece just randomly attached to the design wall. It's obviously not sewn together, but you can see the effect that you get. And by using quite strong contrasting colours here, you can really see where the, the landscape is going with it. So you could just make a completely random pattern with it, or there's a photograph that I'll post where it was the shard at Christmas, and that comes from quite high and slopes down just on both sides. There's no rise and fall with it at all, and that, that's really where this all started for me. But across the top and the bottom, what I would do, I wouldn't trim anything until I've pieced it together. So when you're happy with the arrangement, the first thing to do is to take the two end strips and sew them together. And you're matching those intersections. So just sew two together, press them carefully over to one side and put them back up. Then take the next two, sew them together, open them up, bring them back. Because what I've done on more than one occasion is put them on top of each other, put them through the machine, open them up and realised I've sewn the wrong side. Now with this you really do not want to be unpicking because there's so many intersections. If I've done that mistake what I would do is just change the design. So if it was supposed to be going down it's now going up, I'll just fit it in somewhere else because mine isn't depicting a particular place. So do again as we've done in lots of things two together two together make four two together two together make four and go across and then join them all together and when you have finally got them all together then you could trim across the top and across the bottom now if it's to fit somewhere like I use, like to use these for door hangings so if I want them to be a finished length and they're just a bit too short what I would do is where I've cut something that's too long I would use that and piece it into where there's a gap and, and fill it in so that it fits the size that I want. So I'm just going to show you a couple of, of others. I've taken photographs of these today. So this is one I did when I did a workshop in Scotland and it's not as, as tall across the, the top or the bottom. It's quite a small piece but it's, it's quite, it was a bit wider. I don't think it was a full jerry roll but it was quite wide and it was supposed to depict Scotland. So I put grey for the skies and then the mountains. So that's why there's some quite narrow pieces here because I wanted to get some mountain peaks in and then some snow. And then as it came down, there's the green and there's the purple heathers. And the white was, such to me, looked a bit like sheep. It doesn't really, but that's what I did. Um, now for quilting this, what I did, I use clamshells for the sky across this one, but for the actual landscape, well, you can see if you look on the white section, I've quilted across the diagonal going up and down. And where it changes direction, I'm not sure whether you're able to see that, instead of going across the diagonal, you go to the centre of that block and then change and go back up. So that's where you start to get the curve because if I turn it round, it might be more obvious. You can see where the sweep goes up and then it changes direction and comes back down. So that's that was so it wasn't depicting a particular place, it was just the colours. But this one I made at a retreat that I was on in um, early January, and I decided to do this as a cityscape. I'm not sure whether you can see all of that. So it's got very dark fabric at the top, which is speckled. So I thought it made a perfect night sky, starry sky. And then I chose fabric that to me looked quite like city windows in office blocks and things that go on there. And then the bottom was some fabric I had in that's almost like pebbles. It looks like cobblestones. So I put this together at the workshop and then brought it home and it was all loose, just like this one, put it back together. And as I was playing with it, I thought, oh, it looks a bit like the Three Graces in Liverpool. So the centre one should be square, it shouldn't have a peak on. So what I did is I got a little, whether that works, a little Liverpool FC badge and it's a liver bird. And I put it on the top. 
which is quite apt because it's today, it's the anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster. So uh, this quilt was going to the Utoxa to show, which has obviously been postponed. So you may well see this in the future. Now I quilted this in a different way. So again, it's quite hard to see because I've blended the colours so I might be easy to show the top. The top, I've used stars, I've used spin effects, which is a westerly ruler to give the stars. Now, because this was buildings, I've echo quilted around the shape to give the definition of the building. So forget all that about going across diagonals. It might show a bit better on the gold one where I've gone around. And I was trying to give some perspective. And then the lower strips are across the diagonal because I was trying to bring that to the front. And then across the bottom, which is, I don't think will show up on this, um, it goes in different diagonals across, kept changing the direction of it. So if it ever gets to a show, it will definitely be in Haydock and hopefully Utoxeter will be on and you'll be able to have a, a look at it. So have a go, tell me how you get on and um, see you soon.